Yard needs to be cut again. This will be the ninth week in a row that I've cut this yard. Uh, we got another good, we had a pretty good storm go through yesterday and the day before both and wet things up, just keeping this grass growing, but I'm not doing any jobs today. Matter of fact, yesterday when I got in here after it quit raining, we had to go to Jill's mom's to eat last night because her brother's in town and I didn't even get to lift off the trailer. That's one thing that uh, I'm gonna do today is is get it off. And I'm gonna show you some other things here too. About to unload this thing off this trailer. Uh, this trailer is a uh, iron bull. It's tilt deck. And it's got two 7,000 pound torsion axles up under it. One thing I did with it, um, and I ran the tires that were on it for a year. I had this trailer as a year old in uh, July and I swapped them out at the tires on it from the head 10 plies on and 10 plies on the trailers when you're hauling this heavy stuff they're kind of a joke so they're got it's got 14s all the way around it now i wanted to run them other ones for at least a year to get some wear out of them when i pulled them off to uh to where i get my money out of them you know and, and so i put them on there all in 14s all the way around it and they are a, a hundred uh, I've got 100 PSI in them. I think they're 105, they maybe 110 PSI tires is what those things are. But uh, so uh, it makes a huge difference in the way the trailer feels with the 14s on it as opposed to the 10s. You know, the 10s, they're, they're kind of good for just get by. Like if you're just going to haul a tractor on it or say use it as a car hauler, but not for not for doing this because this this thing right here weighs uh 9200 pounds is what it weighs and uh it's got uh you know so you're still under with the weight of the trailer you're still under what the capacity of the axles are on it at that at that with it you know fourteen thousand pound uh, trailer so but uh about to unload this thing let me get it unstrapped real quick and we'll, we'll unload it off this thing's pretty cool show y'all a little bit about it on the remote you just what you do is is you've got a laser cut key right here and you flip that key up to the 12 o'clock position and it turns the remote on <coughs> excuse me it's powered on but it's not linked to the machine yet you've got this green button right here when you hit this green button then it links it to the machine so see that light right there fast blinking and you hit that button right there and see it change the blinking of it that does just hit this button here then it'll crank they get this thing unstrapped all right, so the way the machine works is, is on this remote right here. Everything's proportional on it. You got three speeds on it. You got a turtle, and then you got a rabbit and a double rabbit, all right? On turtle, the hydraulics on it work at that engine speed that's on it right there now. When you go up to the rabbit, single rabbit, it runs the rpms up on it and you get more more flow more speed out of the machine the only thing that the double rabbit does it don't give you any more hydraulic speed on the operation of the, of the machine of the boom or any of that stuff the only thing when you flip it up the double rabbit is to say if you were on a road and you were going to track a fair little piece or something that gives you one more higher speed on your tracks is uh is all that do, does each one of these things are uh they're all multifunction because you can run this whole machine from the remote control right here everything on it or you can run it from in the basket so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put it on the single rabbit right there and the first thing we're gonna do is run the jib up get it out of the way it won't brush the ground when i back off but it comes really close so i go ahead and get it out of the way let me strap this remote because it's a lot easier to run with it strapped around you because it is kind of big and it's got a little weight to it too so put it on there so i have to hit an override on the on the remote to activate the jib back there 
and again I'll run it on the rabbit and you'll see it start moving. You hear the engine key up on it. You see the jib going out. Look at all the water pouring out of that thing. I'm gonna, while it's up on the trailer, I'm gonna activate the uh, basket dump on it too, to where it'll uh, dump. And you have to hit another button here. See it dumping. And we're gonna go over there and get the sawdust out of it uh, before I take it into my shop in there. If you're running the fiberglass bucket, that's a handy feature right there to do. It'll run it all the way, see it run all the way down. Let's go over here and get this sawdust out. I'll show you what I did on this thing to alleviate that. See all that wet sawdust? You see, I put, I've got an inch and a half hole right there and I put another one over there on that side. That stuff, when it gets wet, it soaks up that water and that's weight right there in that in that basket. I'm gonna go get my blower and I'm just gonna blow this stuff because it's sticking so bad in there right now. Let me go get my blower. All right, to activate the basket dump, you gotta hit this hit this switch right there and hold that one up. It'll bring it all the way back. Up and the same way with down, you just rook the switch the opposite way. You go down with it. Well, that stuff wet was stuck in that thing too, man. It was, uh, it did not want to come out of there, but I got it out. All right, so depending on whether you've got the outriggers down or up, depends on what swaps on this controller right here. And then you can flip flop either opposite running it by working different toggles on this thing. So, say if you've got the, uh, you know the the track the outriggers up and you want to work the basket or something you know you got to toggle over to get to it or if you've got the outriggers down and you want to work the tracks you're running maintenance on them or clean them out or something you have to work the toggle to make it swap back over to the tracks to work them while you've got it up in there but so when i go to unload it i flip it all the way down onto a uh, turtle and where to just kind of creep to get it off the trailer of course it's going backwards so you got to remember that that you are going backwards with it so with that trailer you can back right off of it it'll tilt you see it tilting the tongue stays on the ground turn it just a tad there i gotta come off once i get off and i'll click it up to the uh rabbit and then we'll get on with the program. It's a very simple machine to run. And once you get a few hours on it and figure out all the controls, you know. All right, so now we're gonna flip up the rabbit. Here, take off. And so also, I'm gonna go ahead and toggle over and I'm gonna bring the jib down on it. Right there. So the the but the switcher works the jib also works the right track. So I have to toggle over where it doesn't activate the track and make the jib go down, see. Alright now I let off that toggle and now when I hit it it's gonna work the tracks on it. All right. So that thing is leaning enough right now to where the tilt sensor is kicked in on it. So it disables the machine, even at that angle right there. So it's got an override on it. It's right under here. It's like an airplane style switch. It's up under there and you flip it 
now it'll let me run the machine again and it lets me know on the screen that i've disabled the uh override so as soon as we get it back on this flatter ground right here it, it'll i can take that back off but it's what it's doing is it's just alerting you that hey you are out of kilter now you got to be mindful of that because i don't have the outriggers out on or anything which it's not it ain't gonna turn over right there or anything but i mean it's a possibility if you go any further so it just makes you click in your mind that hey we got this going on you know so now when i hit it it'll come on And so running it forward or backwards on the toggles and stuff doesn't bother me none because of just uh, my years of running a track loader in the woods and excavators and stuff i can it does it's just second nature to me to run it no matter which way i'm going travel mode or got the machine turned i can i can do it either way it does not matter So say we're flat now, I'm gonna go, while you've got it in the override mode, it's gonna whistle at you the whole time. Flip that off. That's wide open on turtle. All right, here goes rabbit. That's rabbit. And then here goes double rabbit. So you can see the difference on it right there. When you go to get in a tight area with it, if you're in a sticky spot where you ain't got much clearance, uh, going back down to turtle is a must. Loading and unloading on turtle is a must too so sunlight and hydraulic hoses uh they don't go too well together they don't mix the sunshine the uv rays and all that come off of it it actually deteriorates hydraulic hoses and something like this right here um you need to keep it if you're not using it you need to keep it in the shade either inside of a building or under the pole barn or or anything like that so with this thing being new i'm still kind of keeping my eye on it for different just different things leaks stuff like that and so i bring it in here after each time i use it to where to get it out of the sunlight out there to where it'll protect those hydraulic hoses because man it will it will cook that rubber it will eat that stuff up quick if you don't so this right here is my battery indicator those lights see that one's flashing right there on so it's down to basically a quarter on the uh on the battery level on my remote so this thing tells you it'll tell you everything that's the home right there it tells you how much weight's in the platform 20 pounds in it right now it gives you all the aerial stuff and then you scroll down through everything see what your outriggers are doing all that stuff like that right there it tells you everything man So you can cut it on and off from the remote or of course obviously the key too flip the key off turn this off so the battery for the remote is right here and it charges the extra one is right there it charges while you are uh, running it get it out right there but anyhow so it goes right here in the back you just flip this one out Put 
Then you got a fresh battery in the in the remote. So I can take this key out of this thing, pull it out, and I can stick this in any other remote and it'll match my machine and run my run my machine 